This is a production of PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Next on Charlotte Cooks, we're making Carolina shrimp dumplings and using lots and lots of local ingredients. Welcome to this edition of Charlotte Cooks. I'm so happy you're here today, and I'm ecstatic to have Sam Dominich in here with me again from Your Farms, Your Table. Is that right? That's correct. What are we making? Much like we do at Your Farms, Your Table, mm -hmm. we're going to utilize local and regional ingredients to make um, a very traditional dumpling called chumai. And even though we're in North Carolina, we could still use local ingredients and create this fantastic Japanese style dish, right? Shrimp from the Carolina coast mm -hmm. right now is the season. So that was really the inspiration for the dish. And then other ingredients that we have really like, it's, it's a situation where the farmers markets and the, and the farms themselves write the menus for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the dish came together. So we're gonna make a miso corn puree, okay. uh, a dashi, which is a very traditional Japanese uh, stock mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of ways, but we're gonna infuse it with Jap uh, vidalia onions Yum. that we caramelize and smoke. Nice. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have some fun. Dashi is basically like, we think of chicken stock in American cuisine, dashi is like the chicken stock for Japanese cuisine, but it's fish based instead of chicken stock based. Absolutely. Right? We're going to use dried seaweed called kombu and then bonito flakes, okay. which is actually dried skipjack tuna. We got a pot of boiling water here. We do. And what are we going to do with that? That's, right, so, that's our base, right? Yeah, that's our base right okay. there. Yeah. So first we're going to start with kombu. So this is our seaweed right here. Oh, look at that. Is yeah, it real flexible? you can probably smell it. Yeah, oh, it's look. yeah, it has oh, a little bit of crack to it. Stuff. So I'm gonna tear this off, and really, what I use is about a four by four, okay, give or take. And so all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna submerge this into the water, mm. right? So we just have water and uh, the seaweed right now. So that's gonna in, uh, infuse the the water with flavor, mm -hmm. begin the base of the stock. So that's gonna simmer, uh, really about five to eight minutes. Okay. All right. Then I turn it off, and then I'm gonna add. Uh, the dried uh, bonito flakes. And flake. this is the dried tuna. Mm -hmm. Wow, look how thin that is. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So the kombu is simmering. All right, so next I'm going to add the bonito flake. Now, will that dissolve completely in there? Almost. Okay. Right, so that's going to simmer maybe two to three minutes, and then I'm going to turn it off. So now we turned it off and it's just gonna sit there and steep like a tea. Because it's fish and, and kombu, we don't really need to boil it for hours and hours, do we? Well, there's a couple different reasons, really. Steeping infuses just the right amount of flavor, mm -hmm. uh, but also we wanna keep it nice and clear, okay. right? So by boiling that, you're gonna, there's gonna be a, a, a disruption between the kombu itself and the bonito flake and it'll create a cloudy stock. Oh, we want this to be nice and clear, okay. right? For a lot of different reasons. The way it eats, the flavor on your palate, mm -hmm. um, and of course, from an aesthetic point of view, mm -hmm. you know, whenever we pour, mm -hmm. which we'll see later on, it should be beautiful. Nice. Going to move to the next thing and just let that sit there and yeah. just infuse. So Sam, what kind of shrimp are we going to use today? We're going to use shrimp from the North Carolina coast. Half the shrimp is whole, mm -hmm. half the shrimp I rough chopped. Now why do you do that? Because whenever we make the dumpling, so I'm going to make a, almost like a paste here. Okay. But whenever we make the dumpling, we're going to fold in the chunks of shrimp. So you so want to, you, you got a big mm -hmm. hunk of shrimp instead of just a bite to the it. paste. Correct. Good idea. We always got to think ahead, don't we? Got to think it's about important. what the experience is when you're going to eat it. Yeah, definitely, and, yeah. definitely. For a lot of reasons, you know, as a cook, yeah, uh, that has to be part of your mindset. Absolutely. Um, but also, yeah, I think you know, forethought's really, really important. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as the avenue of ideas with food. Absolutely. Uh, so here we have maitake mushrooms. I've roasted these with sesame, mm -hmm. just a touch of ginger and a touch of garlic and some sea salt. Nice. Next, this is ground ginger. We have garlic here. I'm not going to use all that. It's too, Boy, early. It'd be, it's too early for that. We'd call it dragon mouth, you know. <laughs> yeah. And okay. All that so we, garlic. Rice wine vinegar. Okay. And now, do you use seasoned rice wine vinegar or unseasoned rice wine? Unseasoned, yeah. Unseasoned, unseasoned yeah. Because it's so, bright and crisp without salt and sugar. It is. It mm -hmm. is. And just kind of an overview, right? So we have the ginger and the garlic. Those are both aromatic. All right. So we have scallion here. That's going to be your allium effect. There you go. You know, like this mm -hmm. onion effect, mm -hmm. um, which is really, really important in balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have uh, a toasted sesame oil. And that's the kind that, had the, we used to say when we lived in Japan that the toasted sesame oil smelled like burning tires. <laughs> as opposed to the, uh, there's another one that doesn't have any aroma to it at all that comes out of Indian cuisine. Yeah. And so make sure you're getting that toasted sesame oil. Yeah, toasted sesame oil. Because you want oil. it to smell like burning tires. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Think of it almost like a, um, a foundational flavor. Absolutely. It's both aromatic, but it mm -hmm. also is very, very assertive in what we're and making very today, assertive. Right? It's very assertive. Yeah, okay, so we, had, so we had the rice wine vinegar, we have the aromatics, we have the scallion, and so this is the soy. Right, and so, um, you know, whenever I'm thinking about 
cooking or I'm walking myself through the recipes, you know, I want to check the boxes mm -hmm. uh, with salinity, mm -hmm. uh, with aromatic flavor, mm -hmm. um, garnishes, so on and so forth. So we're going to season lightly. And you're just using salt and pepper for that? Salt and pepper, correct. Okay. Do you use white pepper or black pepper? I use black. Okay. Yeah. All okay. right. So here we are. You got to be careful when you're doing a food processor because you don't want it to really just over process. That's right. You just bzz, 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 and yeah. there you go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So the way I do it, you know, is I'll pulse it. I'll turn it mm -hmm. on, turn it yep. off, turn it on, turn it mm -hmm. off. All right. So we're going to transfer this to a bowl. And that's it for the filling? We're Except gonna, you're going to fold in the other shrimp pieces. We're going to fold in the chunks of shrimp. Okay. Yeah. That's the good stuff, the big yeah. chunks of shrimp. Kind of what I was talking about with every, with, when, when it comes down to balancing flavor, it's going to show up at the end of the dish, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's important to understand, um, you know, different components of the dish, different flavor profiles, you know, and how they work well together. So it's really important to taste before you add salt, after you add salt, especially when you're learning how to cook so you understand what salt does. I agree. We ready to fold dumplings? We're ready to fold dumplings. We're going to use wonton wrappers as we move forward. Whenever we fill them, sometimes uh, they have the tendency to stick. Yes. So we're going to dust with a little bit of cornstarch. And that's going to help keep those little wrappers from turning into a soft, mushy dough. The dumplings will be more sound. We're going to be using water on the edges, and so it is important to make sure that the bottoms aren't going to be super soggy. Exactly. We're making six. If you're making 200 or right, 300, right, right, in right, a restaurant environment, right, yeah, you got to think ahead. It makes work harder. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we have our um, so we have our filling ready. I have a pastry brush and some water here, right? So I'm going to pre-brush these wrappers. Mm -hmm. You just want to get all the edges. Yeah. I'm. You know. I'm. I'm we're going to seal the edges. So that's mm -hmm. that's where my that's the direction of my brushing. All right. So that's that, and then about a tablespoon, right? You don't need any additional seasoning in this either, do you? Because this the, is ready the, to roll. Everything has been fully seasoned. Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna steam them, right? Yeah. I mean, and that's mm -hmm. something important to talk about too, right? You know, so we we had, you know we roasted the mushrooms, mm -hmm. and when we roasted the mushrooms, we had ginger, we had garlic, we had salt mm -hmm. and pepper, mm -hmm. right? So the flavor is there. Nice flavor there. Yeah. And so whenever we made our our um, our our farce or mm -hmm. our filling, mm -hmm. right? We made sure to include lots of flavorful components. Mm -hmm. Soy, sesame, rice wine vinegar for Scallions, acidity. Yep. And garlic and yep. ginger. So we have all those beautiful flavors just melding and working together. Yeah. Uh, it's a language, it really is. It really is. Yep. Okay, so that's that right there. We want to work neat, so we have our towels ready. Okay, so the thing about these dumplings mm -hmm. is I'll use my hand like that, right? Nice. Almost like uh, making a circle with my uh -huh. thumb and, and first finger. Oh, you're just going to make it like a little flower. Mm -hmm. We are. Nice. And you know what's great about shumai dumplings mm -hmm. in general? You know, there's, there's probably an equal amount of um, folds mm -hmm. to these dumplings as there are tomato sauces in an Italian kitchen. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, you know, you Which see. Which makes it easy for me, right? Because yeah. there's no, there is no wrong answer. Right, you can do it any way you want to. Yeah. No, but I mean, but the main purpose is to pack it in. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to pack it in so it, so it steams consistently. And so that's what you're doing when you're holding it in your hand and you're pressing with a spoon as you're pushing it down in Correct. there so it's a nice, solid little pillow yeah. inside of that beautiful wrapper. Yeah. And then you're just folding those yeah. galette style, actually. That's it. You cook for? Christian McCaffrey. Oh boy, he's my favorite runner on the, on the team. Panthers. Oh my gosh, I love watching that man run. What does he eat? You know what's great about that is, that? Um, you know, is the business that I have, Your Farm's Your Table. Uh -huh. um, you know, the way we source locally. Mm -hmm. uh, I cook like I eat, which is relatively clean. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess he found out about what I was doing. And we mm -hmm. had a conversation. I went and cooked a meal for him at his home. And we hit it off right off oh, the bat. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it was a really cool um, situation where the stars lined up as far as what he was looking for and what I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also, it means a lot to me to be a, more of an ambassador of the community. Absolutely. You know, to be able to connect somebody like Christian McCaffrey, uh, an athlete on the global stage, mm -hmm. affluent even uh, in lifestyle with mm -hmm. the small mom and pop farms that we harvest from. You know, it's, it's those connections that build the community and make a community strong. Yeah. You know, and that's what we're about now, isn't it? Learn we're together. not about yeah. individual. We're, we're coming together as a really strong community after everything we've been through. I think and so I too. I think it's wonderful. Learn together, live together, grow together. Absolutely. I like that. I we're like ready that. to steam? Ready to steam. I'm going to grab these shumai that you have over here so we can fill up our steamer. Sounds like a plan. Now, if you're going to save these, I see you've got these all wrapped up. It's a good idea to wrap them up. Don't let them dry out, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah, and so so I, I dust with cornstarch. Sometimes again. I'll use parchment mm -hmm. paper on the bottom down there. Mm -hmm. But dust that with cornstarch too. Dust that with cornstarch, yep. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once you're done folding, dust again with cornstarch. Not too much, but just enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to protect the exterior and to get a good, nice, tight wrap on it. Mm -hmm. They freeze really well. Oh, good um, they store in the cooler maybe a day and a half, two days, Okay. you know, before they start to melt a little bit. So really versatile. So if you're making these at home, yeah, you can make these a week ahead, two weeks out. If you're having a party or an event, slide them in your freezer. So All now right. we're just going to take that and plop that into that water. This is great, isn't it? So I we have a nice that. tight fitting lid. Yeah. Yeah, plenty of water underneath, but okay. it doesn't contact, it doesn't make contact with the dumplings themselves. And we'll the bamboo nice is not going to be affected by that water around it at no. all. Bamboo steamers are fantastic, aren't they? Beautiful. Corn puree. We've got our Carolina corn shucked. A yeah, little we do. bit of oil. What kind of oil are you using? I just use like a uh, just canola really? oil. We're going to add a little bit of our onion. Mmm, boy, all these flavors. Mmm, boy. So, the, like, uh, you know, the container had, there was a natural uh -huh. cornstarch in there, so I'm right. adding just a little bit of stock there. So you're grabbing that, yes. Season lightly. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Don't all be right. afraid of heating your pan. That's right. So I'm going to add just a touch of, of red miso. Now, why red miso over white miso? Just a little bit more depth and flavor. Okay. And it really, really goes well with the corn. It yeah, really does. Yeah, it does. So we see we have some color. Mm -hmm. uh, you can smell. Mm -hmm. like oh, we definitely an, can an smell. An aromatic effect here, right? Yep. So what I'm, what I'm saying is like, you can't just put everything in there, boil away, you know what I mean, until it right. evaporated. So we are building flavor. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice fawn on the bottom. Yes. Um, the corn is brown. Yes. Uh, onions are, are translucent but not burnt. All right, and the red miso has melted. Water from that cornstarch and everything you had in mm -hmm. there. Correct. So here we are. Mm -hmm. So this is almost halfway evaporated. We can get most of the water out of this. And basically what's gonna happen now is, is the flavor is gonna be emphasized. You don't wanna get all the water out. You wanna have some moisture in there because we're making a sauce. We're gonna it, blend right? it. Yep. I'm gonna scrape a little bit of the font that's off the bottom. You know, and so this is like a, a really important example, I think, me as a cook personally, is to honor the ingredients that we harvest from local suppliers, right? Yeah. And that's like to give it our 110% every mm -hmm. single time out. Mm -hmm. And so this is a perfect example, like, of just not taking shortcuts, right? right? Just making right. sure if, if we set out to do something, uh, we're doing it to the best of our ability. So next, we're gonna blend. All right, so we have a high power blender. You know, if you're, if you're watching this at home, um, you know, and you have your, your tabletop, Hand me down. Uh, and that's okay. That's it'll fine work. too. It'll work too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what we're working with is flavor, and that's what's most important. Mm -hmm. So not even a minute pureeing it. You want to Not get even as smooth a minute. as possible, right? Yeah, that's it. And, and if, you, if you saw me add a little bit extra liquid to it, it's just enough to create some viscosity right. so that the corner puree. All right, so the blender was just bigger than the recipe that I made, so mm -hmm. I had a little bit of water to it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so this is on standby. This is ready to roll. So let's check on our dumplings. Yeah, let's Shall do we? It. Yeah. Ooh, don't those look good? They look good, right? They look fantastic. Yeah. Done, they look fantastic. Uh, I think done perfectly. Absolutely. All right, so I, I turn this off. We're going to just let those rest. Keep them warm. While we, while we take care of our dashi. All right, so what are we doing to our dashi? All right, so um, again, here's another example of building flavor, mm -hmm. right? So we have our stock, all right, but the stock alone isn't enough what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. um, so I have some mirin, okay. uh, which is sweet wine. Right. All right, so it, so it has a sweet flavor. Drop that in. All right, and then I have white soy. White soy. White soy. Okay. Show you, right? So this is this is our salty element. Absolutely. So sweet is. salt, almost like a gastric mm -hmm. in the French kitchen. Oh, there you go. Here we have smoked onions, right? Mm -hmm. So these are sweet onions. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So all I did was I used uh, a slicer. This is on the slicer. Seasoned salt, pepper, mm -hmm. and hickory chips. Right. But it's a it's an assertive That's element of the dish. I mean, I tasted one of those onions when we were getting set Earlier. up. Earlier. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like they'd make a good smoked onion jam. Definitely. 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 So I'm adding the onions mm -hmm. uh, to our reduction, mm -hmm. right? And you can almost even see it start to thicken a little bit. Oh, yeah. Almost down to a syrup. It's, it is a syrup, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. so that's great. Good. 
So we're gonna strain out the kombu and the bonito flake. All right, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of the juice from the smoked onions. So now we've simmered this dashi for a little bit with the extra onions mm -hmm. and the smoked onion juice, um, the white soy sauce. What else was in there? Mirin. Mirin, and mm -hmm. that's it, right? Yeah. And now we're ready to plate, right? Because we're ready now to plate. that's got that. But you've adjusted the flavors and we're ready to go. Let's, Let's plate. Let's do it. Dumplings are done. Dumplings are done. Oh my goodness! God, I love these things. Looks well, good, right? These are fantastic. Absolutely, they are. Yes, yeah, so we have the dumpling, mm -hmm. uh, we have the corn puree, we have a couple elements for garnish, mm -hmm. and then we have a little bit of uh, aioli uh, okay. that I made ahead of time. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with the corn. And this is that pureed corn that we just did in the blender, isn't it? This is it? it, yeah. Okay. Put a nice circle down. Half the fun of cooking is plating, too, guys. It's so artistic. You gotta love it, right? Absolutely. Okay, great. Now, are they really delicate at this point? They're not really delicate. Mm -hmm. I would just recommend, you know, just being comfortable with it. Okay. Just work with them a little bit until you're comfortable with it. Now, would you serve this as an entree, an appetizer, or a I teaser? would serve it as an appetizer. An appetizer, yeah, okay. Definitely. And just or, load your plate up if you wanted to have an entree. <laughs> yeah, or, or really part of an appetizer. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, part of an entree mm -hmm. would work really, really well. Okay, great. So we have, all right, so we have the corn, we have the dumpling. Mm -hmm. A little bit of this aioli on the top. Yeah. Now, what's in your aioli? So I use a little bit of um, rice wine vinegar, mm -hmm. uh, miso, and rosemary. Nice. Thank you. You have some pickled ginger. Put a little bit on each one too. A little bit on each one. Nice. Now you could use the pink pickled ginger too if you wanted you to. You certainly right? could. See, I love eating the pickled ginger. It's such a nice palate cleanser. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's exactly you know what it's all about, really. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just providing that punch. It's almost like a counterweight, you know, it's just to the other flavors that are on the plate, the aioli and the corn, right? And I think- some little microgreens there. Yeah, we do. We have some lettuces and some herbs um, here that are grown locally. Basically what it comes down to is just executing, mm -hmm. right? But within that execution, elevating flavor, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's one of the uh, reasons why we have pickled ginger on the, on the plate. Mm -hmm. So our next step is just to pour the broth. Nice. Um, which in a, uh, in a restaurant setting, we would do table side, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For a little bit of theater, but also, um, you know, as soon as the broth is poured, it should be eaten. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Are we ready? I'm ready to eat. I don't know about you, Sam, but are you ready to eat? Let's do it. There you are. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, look at this plate. So we've got local corn, local greens, Carolina shrimp. Look at this gorgeous plate. Carolina shrimp shumai, corn puree, Vidalia onion dashi with the smoked Vidalia onions. Oh, just amazing layers of flavor in this. If you want to grab the recipes, you can get them on our website at pbscharlotte.org or send me an email at pamela, P-A-M-E-L-A dot roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S at cpcc.edu and I'll be happy to send you a copy of the recipes. But thanks, Sam. I'm so glad you were here. This was a great show. I'm glad we'll have you back again sometime soon. I can't wait. Good luck with your farms and your farms, your table. Yep. Good luck with Christian. Say hey for me. I will. You know, let us know what you're up to next. Sounds okay? great. Yep. Sounds wonderful. I'm thanks so, so much, glad you're yeah. here. Bye bye now, and we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching this episode of Charlotte Cooks. Tune in next time. of PBS Charlotte.